Hi guys, in this video we are building a client server calculator. So I've already shown you how to build a model view controller based um, calculator on a local machine. So what we're going to do in this video is split up the calculator MVC into multiple parts or well, into two parts. We'll have the model on the server and we'll have the view and controller on the client. While we're using the calculator as an example, as a simple example, um, to make it easier to understand the architecture, you can use pretty much any kind of um, application required to run over client and server. So I've already set up a project for you, which you can download from the link um, in the video description. We have a multi-module uh, Maven project. The first project, or well, the first module, is Calc Client. This is where the client code will go. And we have Calc Server, which is where the server code will go. I'm going to very briefly go through the um, Palm build files so that you are familiar with them, but there isn't much in them really. So we've got the JavaFX library for the client. We have the Javelin and um, the logging framework libraries for the server. And that's how um, everything is compiled using Java 11. You can use anything above 11. So um, the server is essentially that and the client is that. So by choosing your favorite ID, you should be able to load this as a Maven project. Once you've done that, uh, we can start writing some code. So if you go down these directories, you will find server app and client app, both of which are empty at this point. <clears throat> and we are going to start from the server because that's the easiest bit. Um, so I'm going to first create a model for the calculator. We're going to go very simple and we're going to have just two uh, methods add which adds number uh, two numbers number one and number two and returns an int which is the sum of the two and we're going to use the same for the subtract method which subtracts number two from number one okay so that's the entire model effectively and we can go ahead and start up our server using the um, Javelin framework. You can use something different like Spring or Spark. Spark, Spark is the older version of Javelin, um, but essentially the functionality is more or less going to be the same. The API is going to be different, but the functionality should be the same. So if we um, start for example um, with port 55555 then we can set up a path using um, the get response handler so from the server's perspective this is where the response is going to be handled um, or rather the request is going to be handled that will be passed from the client and the path is calc and add for addition and it's going to be sub for subtraction and the handler is the context object where we're going to handle our uh, request first of all we will need to take two numbers. These are going to be passed um, from the client side using this request. Request get parameter number one. Note that this is going to be returned as a string, so we'll need to parse it into uh, an integer. And for the purposes of this video, we're going to assume that everything is um, valid as in the user won't pass in a double value for example and there won't be any incorrect parameters 
Right, so we've got our number one, number two. Um, since we're handling, handling add, the result is going to be done through the model, which we're going to create. Let's just create it here. Model. Model add from one, num two. Ah, these are strings, so we have to cast, uh, not cast, we have to parse them into numbers or integers to be more precise. And we're going to return the result, which should be returned as a string, so it's string value of. Uh, result and we're going to do exactly the same uh, for subtraction you will note that this is pretty much the same code so you'll realize that it can be cleaned up whenever there is a code that is very similar looking um, then there's usually a function that tries to get out and you can figure out what that function is really you can see the difference is literally just one um, method call. And as an extension for this, you can then also add um, multiply and divide, so multiplication and division. And then if you copy paste the same code for those multiplication and division operations, you'll see exactly what's happening there. And ideally, you'll need to extract that and that um, and essentially have just this bit that's going to be different. You might want to introduce an enum to keep track of the operator, plus, minus, multiplication, division, and so on. But I'll leave this cleaning up job uh, up to you. Right, so I think that's pretty much it for the server side. Uh, we can run this, and hopefully it will run. In which case we won't need to do any yep seems to be running listening um, on this IP address um, and this port and let's go to the client and see that this actually does work one of the first things I usually do um, when building um, systems is to check the sort of assumptions because I assume the connection is going to work and so on and you're going to then build a very big for example system out of that but if it relies on that one connection working then it would be a good idea to test the connection actually does work so because we're using Java 11 and higher there is a nice API that is available so HTTP request uh, Yep, we need the URI, which is, I'm just going to copy that. And then we need to pass our path, which is this for add and so on. And then we need to pass the parameters, number one and number two number one is going to be 10 and number two is going to be 12 so the answer should be 22 we're using the get request um, because of this bit if you're using a different type of, uh, of request then you will need to change this and that is it for the request well, now to uh, need to obtain the client, which is HTTP client, new HTTP client, and do I need to build it? No, cool. Client send. Um, going to no, we're going to send this synchronously because we don't want the program to terminate right now. Send the request and handle using one of the built-in ones of string handler. 
probably if there's exceptions, I'm just going to add this to my signature. Uh, what does it return? It returns a response, which I'm assuming can then obtain the body of. Yep. And we can just print the body response body. Let's run this. That should run, connect, uh, get the result, and then terminate. Cool, the answer is indeed 22. So what it did was it connected to our server, which is currently still running, um, using this path and using these parameters as input, which went through all of this bit of code to call the model add, and give, gave us the result. So we know that the connection works and everything is, um, in terms of proof of concept, does work. Right, so the next thing I want to do is build our UI. I'm going to do it uh, through code rather than through an FXML file to keep things reasonably simple, because um, UI is not the focus of this video. Um, extend parent, or shall we go with vertical box? Uh, so what do we need? We need some kind of uh, input field one and two. Field one is new text field. No, not the AWT one, the JavaFX one. There we go. Make sure you also import the correct um, import uh, package. We have two fields. Uh, we need the output um, text, which is going to be just the new text object. We then need uh, two buttons, button add, and button subtract. And then obviously you can add two more buttons um, for multiply and divide. Right, um, so we need to populate the children of this parent by adding field one, field two, all of these things essentially. Output and the buttons. And let's add, let's change the margin to is margin, is it? No, not margin, uh, padding. Uh, 15. No, we don't want that for now. Don't want that either. We need a typical JavaFX application. Content, so the usual stuff that we do, create a method, yep. Uh, so that needs to go away to controller somewhere. I'm just going to keep this there for a bit. I'll get back to it. Let's do some restructuring. Um, and don't worry about following this code precisely. It will all be available. Um, on um, on the GitHub repository, right? So we're using JavaFX 11 and higher, which means we need this launcher class. I think we still need that to avoid uh, runtime problems. Launch um, client app class that runs our JavaFX application. Create content. Um, view. Can I just return that? I think it is. Oh, it is parent yet, so it's required. Um, yeah, I think we're good to go. Nope, we are not. Super class. What? Super 
super class access checks fa uh, access check fail no access yes of course it doesn't export because I don't have a module info do I need something in my bomb file that shouldn't be it let's try that anyway Interesting. So the the only way to use JavaFX is to have a module. Well, if it wants a module, we're going to give it a module. Acquires JavaFX graphics, acquires JavaFX controls, and I'm pretty sure we don't need the extra JavaFX graphics here because control should depend on graphics. Yeah, it does. So maybe import re-import that module info requires that that uh, we also need Let's see what it will tell us because it now is a named module um yeah don't worry about that now Yep, module color coin does not export this thing to graphics. Module info exports this thing to graphics. Any other run timers? Great, so we have our um, client side application, which has the two text fields. Um, probably want a bit of spacing between and the two buttons to view you don't need that um, so in the end I don't think I've made any changes to pom XML now it's the same so in case you encounter similar issues um, just add a module info.java and all of this will be available on the github repository so don't worry too much about that set padding set spacing to <clears throat> New button that says add and new button that says subtract. Right, anything else? Uh, yeah, that's good enough. So input five, input 13, for example. And then when I press add, then the text output should say 18. And that's what we're going to do next. For that, we'll need a controller. The way we're going to define the controller is to use, uh, we're going to use an interface. And it'll be clearer why um, later on. We want to return a completable feature of integer. So we're not just returning an integer on add, we're going to return completable feature, which is a way of saying there's going to be an integer that we don't know when saying sort of eventually there will be an integer potentially that we can then use and the same for unsubtract we'll start with the um, local implementation of the controller and this is where having an interface really helps you can have multiple implementations Future, new complete, completable future integer. Uh, return future. And future, we're going to complete manually. 
because it's running locally, which means we don't have to talk to the server to figure out what we need to do. In this particular case, in our example, it's exactly the same as what the server does. But imagine if you're um, dealing with a large application where on the server it has one functionality, like showing all the latest products. And if you don't have an internet connection, you use a local controller, which will show um, cached products, for example. Subtract as this. Um, yep, we don't need that. A client app. So I'm going to create the controller here somewhere. Controller. And then I'm going to. No, this is a local controller. I'm going to pass the controller to the view. Yep, so that's happy. And we can then make use of the local controller. Well, the, the view doesn't really care whether it's local or remote. And we can say button add on action, set an action. Um, controller on add. For that, we need two numbers. Number one, which is field one get text, which we need to parse into an integer. Again, we assume that the input is correct and there are no invalid um, values for which you should ideally check. On we'll add number one, number two, which gives us a future which we can then make use of by saying then accept. That essentially um, is going to be called when the computation for the future has been completed. And this is where the result appears. This is kind of um, basic asynchronous computation. And the result should go to output set text string value of result, because result is an integer. It is, right? Yeah, it is. And again, copy paste for the sub button. Make sure to extract all of this stuff into a function. And then you'll see that there is very little difference between the two. And then you can add multiplication, division, and so on. Let's run client app and see how this goes. So we're adding, we get 18. You probably can't see it because of the font, but uh, I mean, we could make a bigger set font. That ought to be visible. Yeah, I won't do it for the buttons. Why 13 add, you get 18 back. Subtract, you get minus 8 because it's 5 minus 13. Right, so this is our local controller working just fine as you'd expect. For the last bit of um, this video, we're going to make a remote, not calculator, remote controller, which is the most um, fun bit in this um, use case the lens controller and returns all of this stuff. Uh, where was our cool code? Right, so all of this now needs to be allowed in the module.info, module-info. Requires Java net. I think that's the module name for that. And let's just dump it here and then we'll figure it out. 
There we go. Our application file is now looking neat. Right, so for the last bit of this tutorial, um, we're going to have our client in here. We're going to use the same line for um, all the requests. Then we need to build the requests themselves. Which is going to be built in here and in here. Again, repeated code needs to be reflected somewhere. Um, you probably want to extract that information also somewhere at the top so you can refer to it, um, like IP address and port, especially if you're planning to run this on a different machine. Num1 is num1, and then number two is number two. Well, this is add, this should be exactly the same. But it's going to be subtract. The API is subtract or sub. So we made our request. We're going to send asynchronously now. The reason for that being, so here's a bit of multi-threaded uh, model for JavaFX for you. You can't block the JavaFX application thread. If you do, the application will get frozen. We don't want that. And that applies to any kind of UI um, multi-threading, whether it's Android or some other um, UI uh, code that you're going to deal with, which is why we're going to send the request asynchronously, which means it's going to call this function and then immediately exit, giving the control back to the JavaFX application thread. <clears throat> Body handlers off string, uh, then apply. So what are we applying? We need the body of the response, which means when this thing comes back eventually, not now, but eventually, then convert whatever you get back to this uh, basically call response.body. And then, because uh, it's string, we need an integer. Remember, we're returning a future of integer. We need integer parse int, which converts the string to an integer. And that in itself is completable future. Yeah, which means we can return this. Um, yeah, it's exactly the same. So again, should be refactored. We don't need that bit anymore. I think that is pretty much it. Now the great news is we've created the controller without changing any of the code um, in the view, which is great. So the view actually doesn't care about the controller or the concrete implementation of the controller either. This is where we instantiate the controller, which is why it has to change. And let's see how that works. What Kotlin Statinet library is not found in the module graph? Why would you need to call it the Kotlin standard library? We're not using using Kotlin. Yeah, it's not it's not going to find it because it's not there. Is it just my ID throwing some errors? Okay, that was weird. So the only thing I did was right click Maven reimport. I how did it find Kotlin? It's not even in the class path. Um oh it is because of the Javelin library. But still, because I'm not using any Kotlin. Anyway, that's that's a completely different discussion. Um going back to what we were doing. 13, 5, add. Cool. So that is actually returned back from the um, from the server, right? And um, just to make sure we can uh, 
do a little trick here. Body. Turn body. So we're not going to change anything, but we're going to print. We're going to print the body in here. So we know that we're actually de dealing with um, remote server. Yeah, so this is the thing that gets printed out there. And you can also, um, I suppose, print the response itself as well. Just for the fun of it, really, because we don't particularly, we're not particularly interested in it. So, and that was the response 200, meaning everything's okay. And that was the get request that was put in. Okay, so in this video, we looked at um, several things actually. We looked at the model view controller, but not the traditional local version of it. Um, it was split up into two bits. One is the model, the other is um, consists of view and controller on the client. We then looked at how to use a very simple API from Javelin, uh, which is a lightweight server framework to create a simple server to handle some simple requests. Um, as you realize by now, the simple keyword is there for a reason. And we also looked at how to use Java 11 API um, with um, HTTP request and client, which allowed us to send synchronous and asynchronous responses, uh, requests to the server. And we also looked at a bit of how to construct a module info file, since apparently this is what's needed. Um, for JavaFX application to work correctly. It's either that or it's my ID uh, just throwing some errors. Okay, um, if there are any questions, either email me or put them in the video, um, video comment section. And thanks for watching.